With all the 3D printers on the market, it's difficult for anyone, especially beginners into the hobby, to know what to buy. And it's even harder when those questions aren't always answered by the manufacturers in an easy to understand language, or even in a language you speak. I don't speak that. And to top it all off, there's not only a multitude of different 3D printers from every company, but there's different versions of the same printer. For instance, Creality makes the ever-popular Ender series of 3D printers. At my personal last count on their website, they sell 20 versions of the Ender. And that's just the ones that they sell. Older models, well, they're popping up online for sale all the time. Too many, too many, too many! In the past two years, though, Bamboo Lab has constantly been named as having the easiest and most versatile 3D printers on the market. But even they have this same duplicate system. Well, I personally have the Bamboo P1S, the A1, and the A1 Mini. And even though I have nearly a dozen other printers, well, these are the ones that I use most of the time. But what I have, well, that's not the point. The point here is that you need to know the answer to these two questions. Why bamboo and why not? Well, unfortunately, I can't answer those questions for you. But what I can do is give you information and my opinion so you can make the best decisions, at least about these particular printers. And to keep it simple, I'm going to be setting aside the multicolor AMS discussions for this video, and we're just going to talk about the 3D printers themselves. Well, starting with the P1 series of printers, we have the P1P and the P1S, and both have a huge build plate size of 256 millimeters cubed, and they can print up to 500 millimeters a second, which is just like the X1. Now, the P1P version of this one, it doesn't have a case, but there's a lot of options out there to print your own case, and you can even buy them on the Bamboo site and others. But because of that missing case, a few other things are also missing on the P1P that the P1S has. There's a control board fan, a chamber fan, part cooling fan, and an air filter. But being open, these aren't really necessary. Now, you can purchase those upgrades from Bamboo, add a case, and... Now you've basically made it into a P1S. The P1 series printers, as well as the X1s, are what is called a Core XY printer. This means the bed or the build plate goes straight up and down, and the print head is what moves in all directions. And that up and down movement, well, that's what gives us the main reason for wanting a Core XY machine. It gives us speed and quality. The print head can move around a lot faster than the bed, so your prints can be made quicker. And since the bed is extremely stable and only moving up and down as you print, you'll be able to get cleaner looking prints at those faster speeds. Speaking of getting great prints, I would say the true secret to Bamboo's success is really in the two add-ons they have built right into all these printers. There's calibration tests for leveling and vibration compensation. So no matter where you put your printer, you can run a full calibration routine and expect to get extremely good prints without worrying about your desk or your table causing problems. And with the P1S, you can add a case into the mix and you'll be able to print a lot more types of filaments as well. The most common filament seems to be PLA with PETG on its heels. PLA doesn't need the case, others sometimes do. And not everybody needs that case for PETG and others, but depending on where you live, what temps you keep your house at, a case will usually give you a better print. Beyond that, ABS and others really do require a case, not only for temps, but due to that toxic nature of the filament when it's melted. So be safe. Be safe. The A1 Mini was the next printer from Bamboo that came out, and I think it's safe to say the 3D printing world was caught very much by surprise. With the X1 and P1 series machines, Bamboo had established themselves as kind of core XY champs with speed and quality, not to mention that build size. That was pretty much unmatched at the time. But the A1 Mini changed the two things most people loved about bamboo printers. It had a smaller, much smaller build plate, and it's a bed slinger. Well, a bed slinger, also called a Mendel, that's what most people are familiar with in 3D printing. Unlike that up and down action of a Core XY, the bed here does exactly what it says. It slings back and forth, and because of this, most bed slingers have been limited to a relatively slow speed when printing, 
usually around 60 to 150 millimeters a second. Faster than that, and most of them start running into problems with prints getting booted off the build plate or wobbling so much they look kind of like some sort of weird modern art. Bamboo took what they learned on their Core XY printers though, and most notably that leveling and vibration compensation, and they applied it to this new bed slinger. And with a 180 millimeter cube build plate that's really about a third smaller than X1 and P1 machines, it's kind of easy to see how you might be able to get print speeds of that estimated 500 millimeters per second, or close to it. The next printer I think we all expected from Bamboo after that Mini was something big really big, but they changed it up again. This time we did get something big, but it was the big brother to the A1 Mini, and that's the A1. The A1 printer is pretty much exactly the same as the A1 Mini, except for that build plate size. Here we have the same build plates that are being used on the X1 and P1 machines, and crazily, the speed is still the same even with the bigger build plate. The leveling and vibration compensation, that's a big part of why this is possible. And when you put the A1 next to the A1 Mini, it's very obvious they're very different. But at least for me, they've both been incredible machines I use nearly every day. And even more crazy, I've recently seen a number of print farms with dozens, if not hundreds, of A1 printers. They're just that good. So all of that, in a nutshell, gives you the lowdown on the P1 and A1 series of Bamboo 3D printers. Getting the right one for you, though, is the important part. There's really just two things that you need to know. What do you plan to do with your printer, and how much do you want to spend? Now the first question, what you're going to do with it, may be a little difficult to answer if you're new to the hobby. Well, other than make awesome 3D prints. Oh, he's the Captain Obvious guy. But the next question, price, that's a little more understandable. Right now though, without the multicolor AMS add-on, you can get a P1P for $499 and the P1S, which comes with that case, for $599. The full-size A1 brings that price down to a more reasonable $339, and the A1 Mini is the big price drop, though, coming in at a unbelievable $199. Now back to that first question, what you're going to do with your new 3D printer. Well, it helps to compare all of these just a little bit closer. All four of these printers are fast, but fast doesn't always help you make great prints. These printers, fortunately, all have that built-in leveling and vibration compensation, along with a number of other settings to help your prints. The P1P and P1S are both Core XY, and remember, that means the bed goes up and down, allowing for taller and more versatile prints. Also, the P1S has an included case, giving you more filament options for printing, not to mention noise reduction and some air purification. The P1 printers, as well as the A1, all have the same build plate area of 256 millimeters cubed, which is a fairly substantial increase over a lot of other printers out there that seem to hover around 220 millimeters cubed. But the A1 Mini has a build area that loses about a third of that size, coming in at a print area of 180 millimeters cubed. And when you lay that A1 Mini build plate over the plates for the other three printers, well, the size difference is pretty amazing. Basically, it boils down to this. If you're planning to print mostly small items, which is a good bit of what most people print, then the A1 Mini is a great choice. If you want that bigger build area without a substantial price increase, well, then the full A1 is the way to go. And if you're wanting some of those larger prints with the best quality possible at the best price, then, well, either the P1P or the P1S is the way you should go for those. Now, a huge bonus for all four of these printers is that you can always add multicolor printing to your 3D printing hobby at a later date. But if you want to go ahead and get that combo when you get started, you'll end up saving about $100 in the long run which you can then spend on filament, so you can print more stuff. You know, it's that circle of life, or 3D prints, or something. Circle of life. Just to be clear, this isn't an ad for bamboo. I'm not getting anything from them for making this video unless you use one of my affiliate links. Will I change my mind about bamboo printers in the future? I sure hope so. Competition and better 3D printers, well, that's great for all of us. I just honestly think that at this time, these are printers that are great for beginners and beyond. 
And that's why I have three of them. My son has one, and a lot of my friends have them as well. Everything I've told you in this video, well, it's what I tell anybody that asks what printer to buy or why to buy bamboo over something else. Even somebody I don't know standing in a store looking at 3D printers. Yeah, I'm that guy. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Hopefully I can help them and you get the best you can get and have the most fun as we all learn, create, and amaze.